Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. There is a new car in this game. This is the Mercedes AMG SL63. And I'm gonna tell you why I do not understand this car even a little bit. Anyways, Forza Thon Shop, these gloves are way better than the gloves that were in the shop last week. Speaking of things that are in the shop, the AR12 skill issue hoodies are available now. I think all I need to get is 130K. That should be enough. Just like that, our AMG is unlocked. Let's jump into it. Give it a go, Bone Stop. We'll come back to the festival, do all of our customization. Yes, it is a convertible. Wait, does the convertible roof actually work? Go. Oh. Oh, that's disappointing. It just fades to black. Never mind. As per usual, this would be an AR-12 video without any fun facts about the AMG. And it's a bit of a weird car, if you ask me. I love Mercedes. H however, <laughs> I do not understand this car for the life of me. Could somebody explain why you would buy this car over an AMG GTC? It's got... 4C. There's so little room back there. If you put a child in the back, somebody's gonna call Child Protective Services on you. The back seat is essentially useless. So in my mind, this and the AMG GTC, the convertible AMG GT, are essentially the same car, except for the fact that I think the AMG GTC would actually hold its value better because that's kind of kind of marketed as a sports car. Am I not old enough to appreciate this car yet? I don't have a golf membership, but if I had a golf membership, maybe my mind would change. I love what Mercedes did with the old Mercedes SL65 Black Series. I think I am just not old enough to appreciate this car yet because if I see one of these cars, I go, that's a lovely looking car. Anyways, I'm really hoping for this thing. We have some cool customization. And I think we also maybe need to turn it into like a race car with a big old rear wing to see what happens. Chris says it's better than the last generation Mercedes SL. That's like saying my dog just vomited on the floor, but it was less than yesterday. All right, that was rude and uncalled for. <laughs> I love Mercedes. Mercedes makes sick cars, but this is not one of them. This is one of them that makes me sick instead of look sick. It do, it's not even an ugly car. I really need to stop bullying this car. It's a fantastic car. I just don't like it. Engine swaps for the big Mercedes SL. We've got an Audi R8 V10. Okay, please tell me the other engine is from the SL65 Black. Six liter V12. That's a Zonda. <laughs> What in the 12-year-old is that engine swap? I think the Audi R8 engine is probably the engine for this thing. I've already got all-wheel drive. We can make it rear-wheel drive. That's good news. We will come back to that later. I think for now, we'll stay with our all-wheel drive. Twin turbo it, though. Very nice. Chad, I guess technically you are correct because the Zonda engine is actually an engine that's made by Mercedes. Anyways, we've got some front arrow, which makes it look like that and some rear arrow which doesn't fit we can go racing slick tires all around very nice we also have engine spacers and they're big satisfying size get the race clutch on get this transmission on get the drive shaft on give it some upgraded suspension whoa 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 i don't know if it's just me completely changes the look of the car that's so much better why did mercedes not do this from the factory the mercedes SL is growing on me. Wait, wait, wait. What's it look like with a roll cage? I guess we don't need back seats, so we're gonna go for that. Very good. With our Audi R8 engine, we've got 800 horsepower. We've got a hell of a lot of weight reduction on the thing, even taking into account our roll cage. At the end of the day, the Mercedes SL is a German car, which means I'm sorry, I am going to be an Audi man today, okay? Smash, smash. I like it. I can feel my hair follicles crying as we drive this. You're gonna tell me this isn't mad cool? AMG SL. You know what actually we could try to do? We could always try to turn this into our own black series and make it an... Wait, chat. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. 
That's actually a sick idea. What if instead of making an SL63, what if I made it an SL65 black? Oh my God, I almost died. All right, we're gonna come back to that idea after this race. For now, I want to get in front of all of these other land yachts. Oh my days. The interior of this car, beautiful. Wait, we've even got it in sport sharp mode. Wow, they're down to the details. You want a really weird fun fact about this car? You know how a lot of cars nowadays have like hard limiters on their cars where if you're in neutral or like you're parked or whatever, you can only rev your car to a certain RPM. That's like very common in cars nowadays. This car has a really, really weird feature. Sorry, soft limiter. That's what I mean. <laughs> this car has a really, really weird feature that changes the soft limiter on the fly. Your first rev can go to 4,000 RPM. Your second rev can go to like three and a half thousand RPM. Your next one, 3,000. And then after you rev it for like, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven times, the car will say enough is enough, no more revving, and it won't let you do it. Has there ever been a more German feature than that? I think I'm thinking about this car though the wrong way. One of these cars costs, I don't know, here in Canada, probably like 200 grand, maybe even more than that. I think if you're the type of person who has $200,000 to spend on a car, I don't think you really care how much it devalues. And I also think if you have $200,000 to spend, the average person who got that doesn't want something that does that. I think if you're a mega rich old person, this is like one of the best cars you could buy. I apologize, I apologize, I apologize, I apologize. We're about to be a screaming V12. The old SL65 also had a big V12, so I'm allowed. I'm also gonna make it rear wheel drive because black series are very difficult to drive. The old SL65 did not have twin turbos on the V12, right? Hold on, I'm looking up the engine. Wait, it did? It was a twin turbo six liter v12 oh my day we're a six liter twin turbo v12 this is actually more accurate than i thought Okay, I don't want to change the engine displacement. I don't want to upgrade the turbos anymore because it's already going to be a handful to drive. And I think we're good. We're no longer at the top of S1 class, but we are an SL65 Black Series now. Okay, what? <laughs> what am I racing? Okay, and the wheel spin begins. What the... <laughs> Why is there a Unimog? If I lose to a Unimog, everybody will make fun of me forever and ever. I cannot allow this. Oh my God, there is no rear gr- oh, Yo, the Unimog nearly flipped. <laughs> Wait, do you think I could just push him over? Maybe? Yo! Oh! Unimog! Oh! <laughs> He's gone. On the bright side, I will not be losing to the Mercedes Unimog in this race. The only thing I will be losing is my sanity instead. Good news, boys. Good news. See, isn't 900 horsepower lovely? Oh my God, the Lambo's right behind. Oh my God. Okay, look, chat. This is the problem that you've given me. There is no rear end grip. So the back just steps out like a maniac. I blame you. I blame every single one of you. I'm about to be beaten by a Renault 5 Turbo. There it is. Finish line. Oh, that was close. And across the line. Is it time to make the Mercedes fanboys cringe? We're going all wheel drive. I guess I'll go back with the stock engine because it's cool. And I'm gonna go to my suspension and give it rally suspension. See, now it looks like something you'd find in a car park. Chunky boys. <laughs> How much horsepower can this stock engine actually build? You'd assume the turbos in the Mercedes AMG engine would be able to get tuned like crazy, but let's see. You can get an extra 121 horsepower. Full power for the stock engine, 885 horsepower. Not bad at all. Off-roading Mercedes. Mercedes SL63. Is it any good at off-roading? A question that nobody has asked who's ever owned one of these. But I think it is a valid question, honestly. In real life, these are all-wheel drive. So in theory, you could actually get away with driving them in the winter. But would you want to? Holy shit, the understeer. <laughs> I turn into the corner and had to wait two full business days before it actually started turning. Wait, boys, it's actually good. I was not expecting it to be anywhere decent. What? 
guys, this thing is sick and off-roading. It no longer feels like it weighs uh, 10 million pounds. Wait, this is actually really good. It's only on the road where that understeer really... Like, look at what... <laughs> It's a bad sign when you can actually communicate that you're experiencing understeer <laughs> while you're understeering. That's how you know it takes a very long time. And I wasn't expecting to say, like, look, look, as soon as I touch the dirt, the water doesn't even slow us down. Take the jump with the rally suspension. That's fine. I can't believe how good this is. Oh, bro, we've really gotten from a car that I really didn't like to a car that's decent. It's very decent. So fast. Look at it. Jump drift. Bro, you're going to tell me this isn't cool? You're going to tell me this isn't sick? It might as well just be an off-road drift car. Maybe it is an off-road drift car. Oh my days. I cannot believe how nice that is to drive. <laughs> A 360 across the line. Has Mercedes ever made a rally car? I feel like there's been people who have taken Mercedes like off-roading, but I don't think Mercedes themselves have ever built one. Wait, search up the 450 SLC? According to chat, this is one of the only Mercedes rally cars they've ever made? I've never heard of this in my life before. That's the coolest Mercedes I've ever seen. We do need to finish things off with a little bit of a drift build. Do we want to go on-road drifting or off-road drifting? A lot of people are saying off-road drifting. In that case, I guess I'm going to go rear-wheel drive. I've already got these tires, which felt fantastic. If I need to make them a little bit more slippery, I'll just mess around with my tire pressure. And then I'm going to give it drift suspension, but then I'll fix the suspension in the tuning. Honestly, I think that's all I need. I'm just going to kind of cross my fingers and hope that this works. Into the zone we go. So the problem with off-road drift zone is you don't really know how wide you can go. So... I'm gonna need to try to stay in the middle of the road as much as possible, but then we can really push it right there and then snap it back here. This might be a new PB. Might be on pace. Might be on pace. Come on. Come on. It's looking good. Keep the points coming. 100,000. This might be a new PB. 114,000! New PB in the Murph, baby! I have a sneaking suspicion that this is actually gonna work quite well. Watch this. Into the zone. I've got mega, mega horsepower. So I can just slide through the corner beautifully. Give it a little snap back there just to keep it going. Then try to push it out. It's not getting the biggest angle ever. But look at how buttery smooth it is. The Mercedes is not a luxury car. It's a Formula Drift car. Now that we've driven the Mercedes SL... What do we think? Is this car a thumbs up or a thumbs down? This is probably the most mid of mid cars. It's not great. It's not bad. If there was a photo in the dictionary next to the word mid, it would be of this car. 